thank you um, very much for allowing me to have the opportunity to testify um, today before the committee. Um, I am testifying um, uh, in support of HB 5027. And before I start my testimony, I would just like to say there's uh, quite a few people who took the day off from work today uh, to be here to support the humane um, uh, welfare welfare bills. And if they could just raise their hands who are here to support humane uh, bills. Thank you. Um, Senator Meyer, Senator Chapin, Representative Gentile, and Representative Chapin, members of the committee, I'm here to testify today on an act prohibiting the sale of dogs and cats obtained from substandard domestic animal meals. Um, I originally introduced this bill with Senator McKinney last year and also again this year. Um, most people would say that I'm a strong advocate for animal welfare, a big supporter of animal rescue, a strong advocate for shelter pets, and I am. However, someone even like me can get caught up in purchasing a puppy mill pet. Nearly 20 years ago, when my mixed breed dog um, that I adopted from the Humane Society was approaching her 15th year, my then nine-year-old son really wanted a puppy. I asked him, what kind of puppy do you want? And he said he wasn't so sure, so we took some books out of the library and, and did some research. And that was before really the age of the internet, and I got in, before I really got involved with rescues. I thought we would just go to a pet store and look at the breeds to try to get an idea. The entire ride, I repeated to my son over and over that we are only looking. We are not buying a puppy from a pet store because they come from puppy mills. I thought we would just look uh, at the breeds. We went to the store and my son asked to play with the beagle puppy. And as soon as they handed him that floppy-eared puppy, it was all over. He fell in love with her immediately, and everything I said about us not getting a puppy from a pet store went right out the window. And realizing I couldn't convince him that this wasn't the puppy for us, and he, uh, he just wasn't going to go for it. And so I asked detailed questions of the uh, proprietor, you know, where did this puppy come from? Let me see the paperwork. Are you sure this puppy's not from a puppy mill? Of course it's not from a puppy mill. The puppy's, you know, perfectly good. So, as my son stood there with a the small little beagle puppy and tears running down his face, we walked out with a puppy. And don't misunderstand, um, Copper was a cute little puppy and we loved her very dearly. But she ended up costing us over $16,000 um, during her 12 years um, that we had her. While she was healthy the first year we had her, she developed strange illnesses soon after and most of her life, perplexing even our vets about what was wrong with her. Um, and I mean illnesses, and I could go on and on, but strange illnesses where she was all of a sudden anemic, or she had leukemia, and then she didn't have leukemia. And, and it, it just went on and on and on. Um, and we spent, like I said, a, a considerable amount of money. My point, um, my point being is that the dog that I rescued from the Humane Society never had a single health problem. The only thing I ever had to spend money on were immunizations. And the dog lived 17 years. And our sweet little puppy mill puppy, Copper, cost us over $16,000. Um, and, and a lot of heartbreak, quite honestly. Um, so my point is that somebody is, is well known about animals um, got kind of sucked into this. And, but there's a lot of people out there who don't really understand this, you know, and they just go there and buy this puppy. And, and you'll hear from some today, um, since I introduced this bill last year and this year, I've been contacted by quite a few people who share with me very sad stories about what they've had to go through. So after really thinking about this and being contacted by so many people, Senator McKinney and I wanted to request that we uh, have the language changed on this bill uh, to really <clears throat> ban the sale of puppies in puppy stores. After being contacted by a large amount of people and reviewing the data that shows that there's only 18 stores in the entire state of Connecticut out of hundreds of pet stores, only 18 sell puppies. 
So I, I mean, I, I look at the way that our that the USDA simply can't keep up with the inspections to protect these breeding dogs and their puppies and the unsuspecting <coughs> public. Our own Department of Agriculture can't, it doesn't have the manpower to track people who file complaints about puppy mill puppies. Our intent is to stop puppy mill puppies from being sold in the state of Connecticut. We are concerned, we were originally concerned about the pushback from the pet store lobby, but I'll tell you, I have to say, I'm, I'm not really worried about that anymore because I think that Connecticut should stand up in this issue. We should be a leader here and say that we condone this inhumane practice. And there will be people testifying today and showing you pictures of what goes on in these puppy mills. I mean, it's, it's, it's really atrocious to see the kind of stuff that's going on just so somebody can sell a puppy for a thousand bucks to an unsuspecting person who, who's going to be spending a lot of money trying to fix this little puppy that they now are in love with. And while we passed a law, Pet Lemon Law, you know, 500 bucks doesn't cut it. Uh, it's not enough money. And so um, I'm asking that the committee consider uh, adopting some language uh, that Los Angeles, and I will submit it to the, test, uh, to the committee, that they recently passed <coughs> just uh, last year, 2012, that just bans the sale of puppies in uh, pet stores. We can get dogs at, at reputable local breeders in our state. These are small business owners that are, that are tracked, that are inspected, and that are typically a, a, a place where you can go back and you can see where the dog has been raised. You can have some faith in the process. Or you could go to a shelter or through a rescue. I just don't see why we need to sell puppies in puppy stores, in, in pet stores. I don't even have a single pet store in my town that sells, but I have quite a few pet stores that sell products, and they're very successful. So I'm, I'm asking, um, humbly asking, for at least this consideration by the committee. Thank you, Representative. Any questions? Senator? I'm just wondering if this bill is written is really enforceable. Because what it says in the um, in the prohibition language is that um, you can't sell a dog or a cat uh, if the dog or cat is obtained by a pet shop from a substandard domestic animal mill. And let's let's assume that uh, that, that a puppy came from a substandard domestic animal mill in Georgia. Right. How how would how would how do you how do you enforce this? Well that's why I that's why uh, Senator McCain, who by the way um, had car trouble on the way up today. Um, but that's why we will, we are requesting that the language be changed. Because once we really looked at it, we wanted to, we wanted to do something, but then we realized that that you're right, we can't regulate that. We can't regulate it. Um, there's just not the manpower to do it. The USDA really doesn't have the manpower to do the inspections that, that we should be doing. And so much stuff, and as uh, the ASPCA from Connecticut will be here um, talking about how many things slip through the cracks on these puppy mills. Some pretty unbelievable things, and that's why we're asking that the language be changed to a full out ban of puppies. That way we don't have to spend the money through the Department of Agriculture to be inspecting these women. We simply can't. We don't have enough money. We don't have the manpower to be, you know, policing people. But to, to, to do an outright ban is to go from one extreme to another. Uh, Senator McCain has spoken to me about an outward ban before. I, you know, we, I don't think this committee is going to do an outright ban of, of selling puppies. Um, and making people go to breeders only. I, I just don't think we're likely to do that. So, but this, this bill is a draft that just seems to me totally unenforceable. And why, why would we pass a bill that's just Well, I'm asking, well, what we're asking and, and what we're trying to convince you, Senator, is that we would like you to consider an all-out ban. And as I, as I said earlier in my testimony, 18 stores sell puppies. But John Denny's been asking for that one, but, yeah. Ban in the eight years I've been here, and that hasn't happened. So I wouldn't, 
I wouldn't go to bank on that, okay? Well, that doesn't mean we shouldn't keep trying. I mean, I have to tell you, um, I, I have a lot of tenacity when it comes to pets. Um, I, I look at them as defenseless animals that cannot speak on behalf of themselves. And so, I think it's important enough, and I will bring it up every year, even if you keep telling me no, um, because I think it's worth it. And actually, I also think it's our obligation as legislators to protect our constituents from this. This is not right. There are puppies being transported from out of state who have pneumonia, who have surgical problems, taken away from their mothers too young, and then unsuspecting constituents walking into a pet store, picking up a cute little puppy, and then having serious health problems, spending thousands of dollars. So I'm not really sure why the committee wouldn't think about doing it. It's because not there, as if there are them out of business. There are plenty of uh, uh, experiences that go just the other way. Um, my wife and I went on vacation, and we came back and found out there are two children uh, who were age 12 and 13. <coughs> had gone, while we were on vacation, my wife and I on vacation, had gone, gone to a, a puppy store, mm -hmm. a pet store, and, and bought a, um, a puppy. They bought a, they bought a Labrador a puppy. They sold to two young children, minors, a puppy? Uh, well, they, we, they had somebody babysitting with them. Who, 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 who <laughs> them. So they, they, but it was their idea, in this pet store in mm -hmm. Westchester County, and they bought the puppy, and that puppy, um, whose name is Mo, who is now 17 years of age and very healthy and has been healthy all her life. From a pet store in Larchmont. And that's one of the unusual stories. And, so. and, and that wasn't in Connecticut. No. <coughs> My point being is that I don't think we're putting out pet stores out of business. <coughs> there are hundreds of pet stores that sell all kinds of stuff. Birds, fish, reptiles, expensive dog food products, you know, everything you can possibly get. It's a lot of work having puppies in a pet store. You have to make sure they have vet care, you have to make sure they're walked, you have to make sure they're clean, you have to make sure they have immunizations. It's a lot of effort, a lot of work. So the way to make profit is to get them cheaply. And how do we get them cheaply? Where do they come from? Representative Casey. Good afternoon, Representative. Thank Good you for your testimony. Um, I just have to touch on a few things. I do agree with you. Um, I hope we can do something with this. I have a similar situation where I did purchase one dog, didn't do the background check on it. Poor dog lasted six months. This next dog I purchased, I did my homework, found a breeder. Um, and to this day, that breeder checks out for me. The dog's eight years old still wants to follow through with the dog and I think that's the humane thing to do with the breeders and um, being in a town that did have a store that had a lot of puppies um, the store is no longer uh, I think for this reason but people do need to do their homework when they go out and buy these dogs um, because they do become part of your family and I really appreciate you coming down and bring this to the forefront thank you for sharing that thank you any additional questions Thank you, Representative. Thank you, and I would just like to add that uh, uh, Representative Audrey Rogan um, wanted to be here too, but then she had to go on an off-site uh, education committee meeting, and she did submit testimony. Thank you for your time. Thank you.